Hello everyone. Today I just wanted to make a quick video talking about the Kalman filter in EmuFlight and discussing some of the angry confusion that I've been seeing lately, you know, in regards to this filter. You know, because someone, you know, I'm not going to name who it is, I've purposefully crossed out their name, but, you know, they seem to be getting quite upset and angry um, because they're honestly just a bit confused about, you know, the Kalman filter with an emu flight. You know, they're coming out calling me a flat earther, trying to get me upset, you know, calling me a liar and saying that the Kalman filter code in emu flight really isn't a Kalman filter, um, which that isn't the case. So I'm just here to help clear up the confusion and, you know, bring some more order and happiness to the hobby. <laughs> to start off, I'm just going to read exactly what this says, just describe what a Kalman filter is. Um, and yeah, like it says, Kalman filters are discrete recursive filters that allow the use of mathematical models to gain an estimate of a system state, despite the presence of significant error in real-time measurements. By using a Kalman filter, noisy accelerometer, gyro, and mag magnetometer data can be combined in order to, in to, in order to obtain an accurate representation of orientation and position. The following image provides some insight into how a Kalman filter operates. So like it says, Kalman filters can be a great way to combine data to give you accurate representations of, you know, the data you're looking at. So I'm going to use this chart right here and compare it to the code within EmuFlight to show that this code follows the same exact structure and code as is described here. So I'm going to move this over, open up the code. So here's the Kalman filter code in Nemo flight, right there, Kalman.c. So here is the Kalman process, right here. So we look over here. So that the first step, the first two steps are the time update or the prediction, and one of those is to change the state ahead. So it says Kalman state x right there, or that x of k right here. That's, that's right where that first part lines up in the code. And then it says that it equals a of x of k minus 1 plus b u of k. <coughs> so basically the b u of k is an estimation of what you are predicting the value would be at next. That's exactly what we do here. The x of k minus 1 is what the plus equal does is it's x equals x plus and then this is our prediction right there simple projecting the state ahead using and like you can see here based on the acceleration of your gyro we estimate that that will push your gyro further moving forward that's all right here you may notice that there's no a or no b and that's um, simply because, you know, those values aren't necessarily needed to still have a Kalman filter. Um, in fact, that A value is the state transition matrix. Um, since EmuFlight is only using one um, data set, you know, it's not combining multiple gyros or multiple data sets. You know, this B, H, Q, well, the B could still be used, but the H um, and A those things aren't um, really used, so we can just pretend that all of those have a value of 1. So that's the first part of the Kalman filter, is projecting the state ahead. Next up, we update the last state, which isn't shown here, but it is a step. Next is some EmuFlight specific code. This just makes the Q value in um, Kalman filters um, it makes that value dynamic, which it's usually a static value, but it's based on the noise of certain, you know, it's based on the noise of what um, device you are reading data from. So with a gyro, in case you didn't know, gyros are actually more accurate when they are spinning. Um, and this code kind of relates to that and helps the Q be more dynamic based on, you know, those range of needs. So we can see here, step two, project the error covariance ahead. Wow, right here. Kalman state P, so that's that P right there. 
equals, and like I said, we can ignore the a's, just assume they're 1, equals p plus q. Right there, p plus q. The e is just the dynamic part of the q that is added to emu flight. And so, you know, we just have a dynamic q, whereas most Kalman filters use a static q. But you can see that right there, p plus q equals p. Okay, so so far, this time prediction in emu flight, the Kalman filter is perfectly following the time prediction, you know, the time update prediction. All right, so let's move on. Let's see if the rest of the Kalman filter follows. So next we have the Kalman gain. Like I said, H's, consider them to be 1. So we have P, and because the rest of the code's in brackets with a negative 1, it means divided. We have K equals P divided by P plus R. Now we come over here. We have K equals P divided by P plus R. Now you might be wondering what R is. Um, R is simply the Kalman covariance value. It's essentially the, I can even show you over here, R is, yeah, the estimated measurement error covariance. Um, and anyways, um, R is really just based on noise, how the noise is acting. And as things get more noisy, it you know, changes things with the Kalman filters. This just determines kind of the noise covariance that's going on, all this code here. But anyways, as you can see, that spits out our R value. And inside of here, once again, we have the first step, the Kalman gain, that K value. It's P divided by P plus R. And we can see it follows that perfectly. Next up is to update the estimate via Z of X. And Z of X is... Um, because we're not using a, you know, we're not combining multiple data sets, we're just combining, you know, we're just looking at gyro data. We're not looking at four gyros combining them, but we're just dealing with one gyro. The Z of K is the gyro data that we inputted into the filter. Once again, H we can look at as one. And so we have X right here. X equals X plus K. So that plus equals means x plus, and right here we have k, right there, there's k, times, because that parentheses means we're multiplying, times input, which is the z, minus the Kalman state. Wow, minus that x. Right there. So, so far, both of those measurement update steps are correct. Let's see if the, you know, updating the error covariance is done accurately in the flight as well. So we can see here, Kalman state P, that's that P of K, equals one, right there, minus K, and then there's an H, which we are not using, that's just one, times P. Right there, P equals one minus K, times I. Yeah, 1 minus k times p. So as you can see, um, the Kalman filter with the flight it does have a time update that does follow these two steps, albeit with a dynamic q value instead of a static q value, and the measurement update is done correctly, you know, getting the correct values for Kalman gain, updating the estimate, and updating the error covariance. Those five steps that are shown here is exactly what is done in the Kalman filter with an emu flight. Now, I'm not going to take the time to completely describe how to tune or how to use the Kalman filter. I just wanted to show that emu flight does in fact use a Kalman filter, that we are not lying when we say it uses a Kalman filter, and that, you know, Kalman filters can be quite useful and you know, they've been studied for, you know, many, many years. They've been used on rockets. They've, you know, they've been used in tons of different situations because it's somewhat easy to work with just because it's been studied so much. And, you know, it's some of the code that we pulled from, you know, Helio. And, you know, we've taken that, we've made a few changes change some of the dynamics of the dynamic Q value. And, you know, this filter is 
a Kalman filter with a dynamic Q value. So that's it for the video. I just wanted to help sort some of the confusion that I was seeing and you know hopefully bring some more unity and happiness back into this hobby because it seems that Kalman filters seem to upset people for one reason or another that I don't fully understand. But yeah, have a good one everyone. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that and that maybe you understand a little bit more about Kalman filters, but this was mainly just to show that Emuflight does in fact use a Kalman filter. Anyways, have a good one everyone. Bye.